Hello. I'm gonna get down. I this is not safe. This is not safe. That's on a ledge. This is a terrible idea. I wanted an excuse to talk about libel essentially. Um with the resurgence of like haiku and stuff, it's gotten popular again. So I'm so happy about that. Also, I want an excuse to flex my volleyball muscles. So here it is. So I played volleyball for about like six years from like sixth grade till like my junior year uh, high school. So I know a little bit, I think I know a little bit about volleyball. Just, just a smidge, just a smidge. This joke is fucking funny. Okay, I'm taking this out of the fridge. And I just wanted to flex my knowledge about shit and just talk about stuff they get right in high queue, stuff they don't get right, stuff I wish they talked about, and I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't know, anything in between. Woo! But since we are in my house, my dog time. Hey. Okay, so it's taken me like 20 minutes trying to find a good camera angle. And the only good camera angle is outside, so the sound's gonna be fucky, and I'm so sorry, but... It's better than nothing. Aggie has followed me outside. Goodbye! Goodbye! So yeah, we're at my house, so we get to talk with my dog and my animals, and look at my fucking- look at my fucker! I love her! I was gonna not cuss in this video, but I already did. Some mumbo jumbo about volleyball. Volleyball was created in like Massachusetts in 1850 something um, by some bored kids, from my understanding. It was recognized an actual sport and entered in the Olympics in like 1964, I think. I don't know, I just thought that was interesting. And it was in the Summer Olympics at Tokyo, of all places, where our story takes. No, it doesn't take place in Tokyo, but anime, so. Mm. Volleyball for dummies is there are six people on a court at a, at a time. There can be more people on a team, but at a, at a singular time, each team has six players, making it 12 players on a total court. Um, there's a ref who is stationed on either on the net, on like a little podium, or by the net. And with the referee, there are two people on the opposite side of the courts on opposite side of the corners. One like left side, one right side. We'll get there. How a preferable volleyball play will play out is someone will serve the ball on the opposite side. Your team, let's say you're on their team, will receive the ball. The uh, receiver will usually bump it up or pass it. Then it will be passed to the setter who will set the ball. And then finally it will be spiked down by either the left side or the right side or maybe the middle. Or anyone on the court. It doesn't really matter. Preferably one of the hitters. When someone spikes it down, then the t opposite team on the net will then have the chance to pass it, set it, spike it, or if they don't receive it, it will be spiked down and the, the team that the first team will be able to get the point. The point of volleyball is you're supposed to get 25 points before the other team. Um, you have to win by two points. This is kind of boring mumbo jumbo stuff. So that's basic how a uh, volleyball goes. Um, in high school and college level volleyball, you can see these sets going on for like minutes at a time. Someone will receive the ball, set it, spike it. The other team will receive it, set it, spike it. It will just keep going and going until someone like kills the ball, which killing the ball means just spiking it down and it hits the ground and no one's able to bump it back up. And so it's very exciting watching like higher level volleyball and like, ooh. Again, I played volleyball for six years. Haikyuu is a huge comfort for me because it's very good. It's very accurate to how volleyball is played. I like the characters. It's very nice. I There's like little hints to, um, there is a brand of shoe I think Hinata uses and it's, I think it's Asics. And it's a, t it's a volleyball brand that makes volley specifically volleyball shoes or court shoes. No, it's it, the brand's name is Basics, but they, put the, they took the B out. But I wanna talk about, um, how to play volleyball for a second. So I'm wearing jeans. That's not a good demonstration. So I'm gonna go put on some fucking spandex. And volleyball. Bitch. I'm an idiot. It is Asics. I have a knee pad right here. Boys and girls volleyball kind of differs a little bit. The rules are the same. More of, um, the instruments used in the uniform is a bit different. 
boys volleyball, uh, the uniform consists of like a jersey, a dry fit jersey of some sort, and some gym shorts. Uh, girls volleyball consists of a dry fit shirt. It, depending, it's either long sleeve up to like here, super short dry sleeves. The girls team on Haikyuu has the one that's no sleeves at all. They also wear these things called spandex. I was gonna wear my game one, but those ones didn't fit me in high school, so they're not gonna fit me now. My school didn't let us, but I got away with it. <laughs> you're not supposed to wear this length of spandex during a game, because you're supposed to match, I guess. is dumb. Spandex is stupid, especially if you are a woman. That They're only worn by women, and I think that's fucking stupid, especially because we have ass. When you have to wear short short spandex things, it's not fun. You shouldn't have to. I'm just... Saying. Um, I'm not wearing shoes right now, but normally you wear shoes. Um, you, they make specifically branded um, types of shoes. So like Asics. Asics sells really nice uh, volleyball shoes. They are like court shoes. They can range up to like $60 to $150 a pair, uh, which is like, yeah, tennis shoes. And if you wear them outside the court, they will get ruined. It's like wearing um, roller skates, but like rolling down a gravel road. It ruins the wheels. You don't want to ruin the, the bottoms of your shoes. So going to games and things, I would have my little backpack. It would have my water bottle. It had my my little volleyball shoes, my knee pads. Um, if I was at school before, I would have my spandex, uniform, yada yada. Let's talk about form, and then I'm going to talk about positions. I figured you're going to have to mostly see my feet, so you're not going to see my pad in this, and it is fine. Whatever. So basic volleyball position is. This. I'm going to summon the foot fetishes. I am sorry. Your feet are as far as your shoulders. They are shoulder length. You cannot see them, but here are my arms. Whoa. Then I'm going to bend your knees at like 45 degree angle. It's not actually 45, but you're going to bend your knees like this. I'm going to show you from the side. Like that. So more like 125, but 45 is a funner number. So we're doing math. And you let your arms be loose. So this is for when you're receiving a ball, you just get into this position and you just can, ooh. Um, your arms are supposed to have your forearms out. This is so it has a area for the ball to hit and you can receive. There are two ways to do that. I do it so like, take your hands, you're gonna take one and you're gonna put the other one around it. Exactly like that. You have your thumbs out like that. I also know people who do, like a little cup thing. This kind of looks inappropriate, but imagine what well, you will, and you put it another right now. The point is being your thumbs are connected, and in turn, your wrists are connected, making it easier to do this. Never cross your fingers. It doesn't really affect how the ball is hit. It just affects whether or not you're going to break your fingers. In the odd chance of like a ball getting served to you, and you accidentally hit it on your thumbs, which you're not supposed to do, you're supposed to hit it on your forearms. It will break all your fingers. The force of the ball getting spiked down to you, you, you will die. die. So that's basics. Let's talk about positions. We are now in my bathtub. There are generally three to four positions in a volleyball um, team. So I have a whiteboard. I can draw this on a whiteboard. So I didn't have a whiteboard, but I have a sketchbook and some markers. So we're gonna use these. This is your court, a uh, horizontal style. If you're on it, you would look like this or like this. This line right here represents the net and then these are the boundaries. I'll explain rotations, but I'm not gonna explain every single rotation. So on team A's side, I'm going to explain how volleyball usually is usually set up. In the court, you have the front row and the back row. It is divided by, there's an actual line in the court. I used a dotted line to illustrate this. Your back row is your, are your receivers. These are the people like the libero, who is your main receiver, who is in charge of getting the balls that are like set down, spiked down, or served over that are just hard to get. I don't know if they explain this in, in high queue. I haven't watched it in a hot second. I was gonna today and then I didn't. <laughs> but <laughs> the middles, are your main source of blocking and overall front row man. Um, they're usually your tall boys. Nada should not be a middle. 
I know it's like comedic purpose or whatever and it works for them because the setter and the middle are really close to each other and the setter in most volleyball games the setter uses the middle to do quicks which is what they do which makes sense for him to be middle but it's stupid <laughs> he would never be a middle in actual volleyball and that's what pisses me off but I love my boy and I want to see him achieve so I put up with it. <laughs> Nishinoya is a really good example of a uh, libero. It's funny because I've never seen a tall libero. They're all short and, the re and they're good at receiving on the ground. Imagine he not a tall and then, yeah, that's a middle. <laughs> libero is a fun position because he, in most things, if you were to rotate players out of the game and switch in with your other team members, you would have to stop the game and switch them out. Libero can run in and run out at any opportunity they can. And this is done so you have two middles and a libero, so three people. At some point in the game, you're always gonna be in all of these positions because you're going to rotate with each, like, point one. There's like numbers for each of these and I forgot them, so it's fine. Oh yeah, it's like one, two, three, four, five, six. So position one. When the middle goes back, they can either serve or the libero can serve. And so they would run off above the um, this line right here and the libero would come in right here. I forgot like how this is legal, but it is. When this middle goes out, the new middle will come in and be in this position. And the libero will usually stay in the back constantly, pretending to be whoever just left. And then you have your left side hitters, uh, your wing spikers, whatever. They're your spikers. They're usually the people, if the opportunity not to get a quick with the middle is open, they will usually have the big, like, overarching spikes you see. So where the seto just makes a little arch with the ball. I should explain this more. I was a middle as well as a right side. I switched out depending on what we needed because I think we had like, we had a bunch of girls on my team. So like I knew two positions. Each spiker has a different responsibility. Middles just have to get up there and swing like how Hinata does it. Um, You're not too focused on the ball. You're just there to swing and it's a set of responsibility to get it into your hand. Left sides are more of watching the ball, waiting for it and spiking it down. Same thing with right sides, but like, back. The setter is one of the most important team members are, and positions on the team. They also end up all being bitches. <laughs> Every single setter I know is a bitch. The main position is to get the ball high enough so the wing spikers, the left sides, right sides, middles can hit it. Shit happens. Um, no one's perfect. Um, so the setter's job is to correct mistakes, essentially. So like... Say like the libero hits it, um, libero hits it, like maybe they, I don't know, they hit it, the ball starts going in that way. The setter can try to run over there or they can say like, help me, help me. And then the left side will either set it to the middle or to the right side. Uh, this, this is one of like seven positions you have to learn. I'm not gonna explain all of them. They're confusing. But the point being, your setter always has to be like, at the net. I circled it real good. I have highlighters I could have been using. The setters always has to be at the net. Um, so they have full eye view of everything. And it, because of that, sometimes the setter is in the back row and you can't cross this line. The rest of the positions have to uh, move because of that to make up for the fact that there's a person in the front row. It's convoluted and I'm not going to explain it. Uh, play volleyball. <laughs> Some fun things I might I'm going to demonstrate these and then Kai can put these in there now. Different receiving methods is you pass the ball. You, if the ball is on the ground, you can do a rolling, rolling thunder. I actually like saw it, um, like after I got into high I was like, I did that once where I like did the dive, but I like screamed out rolling thunder. And the one friend that got it looked at me, she's like, shut the fuck up, we have a game. Also, these are the reasons we wear knee pads. Your basic receive. I don't have a volleyball. And then your basic jumping motion, which is this quick step and then a jump and then a swing. There's two forms of serving. There is underhand and there is overhand. Underhand, you can tell is underhand because you hit it out of your hand and it is under. And then overhand is you smack the goddamn ball. <laughs> I'm gonna end this with some fun volleyball stories. 
I did club volleyball, which is more, it's like, it's volleyball that can go almost all year long. I have two memorable coaches from that time um, because the coaches from high school, they were okay, but they were mostly just teachers they hired because, yeah. Or fun fact, uh, the principal's wife, she was nice. She was an actual volleyball coach, but like, I just thought that was weird. First coach is, um, I'm, let's call him Matt. Matt had anger issues, <laughs> to put it lightly. He was more focused on winning more than like us having fun. And it was club. It was more competitive, yeah. But it was, we should still have fun. Um, we did like a lot of conditioning and stuff. He was just mad constantly. We were so like concerned about getting injured or being sick that he was gonna get mad at us and not let us play the games because he would do that if we weren't at every single practice or anything. My most memorable game with that coach, we were, it was one of our last games and we were just kind of like tired at this point. We were losing this game and Matt had, uh, in a fit of anger, thrown down his um, clipboard and started punching it. He's in the floor, let me demonstrate. in front of 13 girls on his own team and 13 on another team and all of their parents and friends who had come and the ref who uh, put him in timeout. So that was Matt, a coach I really did enjoy. Let's call him Ryan. He was cool. He cared more about volleyball, like us learning how to play volleyball and like having fun playing, vo playing volleyball versus um winning. Also that team was a lot better because it was filled with like people I knew um, and like people I don't, like my high school team was like it was mostly just everyone from high school in there and my previous team was not. Yeah that was the team that was the team that um, a girl got in a car accident like as she was driving there and then she had like a moment of just she's just vibing in the corner like I I just witnessed a car accident. She wasn't in it. She witnessed one, and she's like, "I need twenty minutes." And I'm like, "You okay?" Hi, Q. <laughs> hey, do you have anything to tell Kai's audience? For me and my house and my dog. Um, hope y'all stay safe during these um, Backstreet Boys concert. Backstreet Boys concert. Hope everyone's staying safe. Washing your hands. Oh my god, Aki. <laughs> um, I hope you guys' the day gets better from here. I thought I saw a ghost in the corner and I got very scared.